Well, we had a pretty good welcome back to land last night. I think we all had a couple tears in our eyes as we were eating our first meal and drinking sangria. Land. Stinks. Are you crying? They're yeah. Fun. What happened? Tacos. The first time I've had tacos in months. I just am so happy. I didn't realize how much a food could make me happy. Did you bring us sangria? Yes. No. <laughs> and then we ended up going to a carnival. What did you guys think of the carnival last night? Always land up at the island that's having a party on the day we arrive. <laughs> right? What's yeah, up I with that? <laughs> <laughs> Good food, good drinks. Yeah. What uh, what was your favorite part about yesterday? Oh man, I see the randomness of it all. Like that's the crazy thing about coming into an island you don't know. Like, we didn't even know it was going to be built up and touristy like this, and then all of a sudden you show up, and there's a freaking carnival with like the best fireworks show I've ever seen in my life. This is the story of Delos, a sailboat that's been cruising around the world for over a decade. I jumped on board 10 years ago, not knowing that one day I'd be stepping up as captain with my girlfriend and first mate by my side. Over 50 crew have called Delos home, and that tradition of sharing the adventure continues this season as we write the next chapter of the Delos story during a lap around the North Atlantic Ocean. If you enjoy Delos videos, please hit subscribe. It's a fast and free way to keep our journey going. What's up? What's up? What happened to your face? Nelly. I'm Nelly now. Skateboarding. I had a little, a little slip. I was doing a power slide down the road and I slipped. And I had a couple of rashies on my side and a gentle split above my eye. You, you split your eyebrow open. Yeah. Sean was trying to shave your eyebrow last night. Yeah, he, Sean's like, I'm gonna shave it so I can bandage it. Well, it actually did close up a lot. Mm-hmm. What's going on here today? Sean is just giving it all. This is his giveaway bag. And Instead of packing, he's just got rid of all of his clothes. And it seems heavy. <laughs> all right. How's it? I gave away all that stuff and I still got all of this. All of this. You get there, you get there. I'll get there. Uh, what's your guys' plans here coming up? Uh, we're looking for a place to stay here in Lanzarote, just somewhere near the surf, so we can just surf our brains out, chill out, do exercise, meet up with you guys, and do some adventures. Yeah, it's weird, live land life for a little while, which right. I haven't done in three years. <laughs> so, yeah, it's crazy to think that moving off a boat. After four months of living and sailing with Sean and Kia, it was time for them to pack up their lives and move on to the next adventure. Changes in crew is not only major for the people who leave, but also for those of us who stay behind. Suddenly, everything seems so empty and so quiet. You begin to realize how crazy it is that we all spend so much time together in such close quarters. But it felt right, and it was time for Blue and I to have some space and adapt into full work and edit mode. Delos is love boat, huh? There's no light without dark. This is gonna be like a big trip that it changed life, right? We'll open a new chapter on my life and that's it. This is the dream that I've been dreaming of for so long since I started sailing.
Whoa, get a room! Jeez. <laughs> oh. Oh, so gross. I'm, I'm not even looking. <laughs> Game on as strangers or leaving as lovers, and they're moving into an apartment together. <laughs> That's Great. awesome. We've never done a goodbye where we're gonna be in the same place for a while, so it kind of eases us out. You can like call them up and be like, "Hey, do you wanna go grab a beer? Do you wanna go on a mission?" The thing about this though, it's whenever, not goodbye. Whenever we say, whenever people leave, I always say. See you soon. See you later. But I really just say that to make myself so feel fun. better. Yeah. But now I get to say it, and it's actually true. Like we're gonna see you guys soon. Yeah, we'll see you soon. A couple days. Yeah. Yeah. Have fun getting pitted, bro. Thank you. Later, bro. Get out of the bro. Catch you just now. Yeah, just now. <laughs> we'll see you, bro. <laughs> well, thank you for the amazing morning. <laughs> Bye. Basically what we're trying to do while we're here in the Canaries for this last month is work enough to come up with two months or two and a half months of episodes so that way we can continue to release episodes while we're crossing the Atlantic back which is a sale of we'll probably not be able to have internet and release episodes for like a month. So we leave uh, Canaries in about a month and then we have a month of sailing basically and we need to be releasing episodes during those times so Boo and I are pushing really hard now to finish up we'd like to get nine episodes <laughs> done um, with each episode takes at least 40 hours so we're talking nine weeks just right there which is impossible because we only have four weeks so we're doing something, Blue's doing a bit of the initial editing and going through getting the rough storylines together and then I'm going through and she's putting music and all that stuff and then I'm going through and finishing them off with like the audio tweaks and making sure that, I don't know, just the story's there and the voiceovers are there. And it's cool because those are both of our strong suits. So like Blue really enjoys that process and I really enjoy finishing the, finishing the videos and doing the audio tweaks and stuff. So we got one uploaded so far. <laughs> And we're just about to upload the second. It's exciting. It is exciting. So it was time for us to switch gears, put down the cameras for a bit, and spend some solid hours behind our computers. Ah! I'd like four sips of coffee and... I go into super edit mode, and my brain goes faster than my hands can move, so it's like... The experience of watching, sorting, and editing through terabytes of footage is super time consuming, but it's also a very, very special thing. Oftentimes, it feels like life is going by too fast. And as we constantly change countries, languages, crew, currencies, friends, anchorages, and everything in between, there's many mornings when I wake up and it takes me a minute to remember where in the world I actually am. But when we look back and edit our videos, it feels like a way to process everything that happened and convert thousands of fleeting moments into solid memories set in stone. And while making a boat your office definitely has its perks, there can be some pretty distracting parts as well. So we were just halfway through our work day and uh, Delos kept, kept like yanking on something. Jerking wild. Jerking. Um, and so we had to see what was going on. We came out, I jumped in the water and we were kind of caught. The wind and the current have been against each other and there's been huge swells coming in. So 
I just dove down, got us free, and now we just had to move our office mid-work day, which is always interesting. Um, we're trying to move anchorages. Good. The wind's even different right over here, huh? Yeah, I mean, during the day, you get so much land breeze from the island, when the island heats up, yeah. and the hot air rises up into the sky, so it takes the cold air from the sea, and it rushes in to replace that hot air that's going up, so you get like a, a land breeze over here. This is the most frustrating part of editing. Do you see this spinning wheel of death right here? It means that all that work I just did, potentially, is gonna be gone because Adobe froze. Probably because this GoPro clip is corrupt and she gone. Ah! How's your technical situation going? Literally, it just crashed. <laughs> I'm reopening it right now. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know what happened, but the audio stopped working. My headphones just stopped working and nothing I could do to fix it. So we're doing, we're, we're using these laptops here for pretty heavy editing and computing. So normally this would be done, this type of editing with like long, long sequences would be done on, on proper Big Macs with big processors. So sometimes the laptops just get like overwhelmed, not to mention Adobe does have some bugs, but you know, that's the deal. That's it. Get your together, Adobe. After a couple of weeks of 16 to 20 hour hardcore editing days, it was time to upload a handful of episodes. So how does that work? Well, Blue is on a mission to track down fast, cheap internet. In this case, that means running a few miles into town to buy a local SIM card. All right, success. I got two 15 gigabyte cards for 17 euros a piece, and that should be enough to upload our first few videos. So now it's time to run back. It go good. Yeah. You look tired. Yeah, it's hot. Is it a good run? Yeah. Is it pretty fast? Yeah, for a six gigabyte episode, it says time remaining 40 minutes. That's crazy. Super fast. Super, super fast. Yeah. Cool, we picked the right one then. Yep, nice job. After getting our first few videos uploaded, we seriously needed a break, so decided to explore a bit of our underwater surroundings. We made friends with the local dive shop, and they wanted to show us a pretty famous underwater museum nearby. Museo Atlantico is one of several underwater sculpture parks throughout the world, constructed by Jason Dicares Taylor. This park was the first underwater art museum in all of Europe and is made of over 300 life-size sculptures. The sculptures are made out of pH neutral concrete, which acts as a perfect substrate for coral to grow. The idea is, in 20 or 30 years, this park will be transformed into a beautiful coral garden.
After a day of diving, it was time to tackle a boat project and fix our broken autopilot. So I didn't want to mess with the autopilot when we were still out sailing because it was rolly and our backup autopilot was working pretty well. I heard this crazy bad noise from the autopilot in the back. So I switched it over to our secondary one. We have a backup autopilot. I have a feeling it's the gears inside that have kind of rubbed against each other and worn away. It's happened once before. So at least I know what to look for and that's what it sounded like last time too. Now that we're at the dock, we can open it up and see actually what's going on. Go ahead and do it. Um, go like three to starboard first and then back to port. Sound right. All right, yeah, something sounds pretty messed up. Okay, we're gonna open this thing up. Go ahead and pop it off. So this is the, the autopilot. This is the electric motor that's controlled by the, the thing right by the helm. And this motor goes down into here, has some gears, and then takes this and pushes this back and forth. That is attached to the rudder. So when it pushes that way, the rudder turns. Pulls that way, the rudder, rudder turns. Does that make sense? That doesn't sound good. Yeah, it doesn't So. We're about to pop this thing off and then see the gears inside. Oh my god, look at that dust. You that dust is bad. So this this happened to Delos, I don't know, like four or five years ago. But basically what happens, this motor here spins this belt here, which spins this. There's a gear on this shaft that spins these gears and it locks onto the teeth inside here which is connected to a magnet on the other side. So this sits on there, if everything's working properly then this arm goes in and out and messes with the, uh, the rudder, changes the rudder. But these gears here have been worn away. These teeth are destroyed. Do you see how they're like angled Yeah. and how that's wobbly? Mm -hmm. That's not good. There should be no play in there. And then what it's done, because it has play, has worn away this whole entire thing. All that play has ground down all of this dust. It's like ground plastic and metal, with just gears. Well, because we're in the Canaries and there's a lot of shops around and stuff, and we're not super remote, I'm pretty sure we can just order the, the parts that we need. So how does the backup autopilot, how is it different? Because obviously it's here, it's like below the helm. Yeah, so this one sits in the aft and it's, it's a linear drive so it connects directly on to the rudder itself mm -hmm. so, and it moves the rudder independently of the steering cables or anything like that. Where the one that's up here, I'll show it to you, the one that lives under here is this and it's, it's, it's similar, it's just an electric motor but it's not a linear drive, it's a chain that is connected directly to the steering wheel. So this just acts like it's turning the wheel instead of turning the rudder in the back. It does the same thing as if you were turning the wheel. And then here's just the switch to switch between the two. Uh, so that's the one in the back. That's off. That's this one. Uh, okay. So it's Is it common for boats to have, for cru cruising boats to have backup autopilots? On? I don't know. I don't think so. It's a really good idea. It's really cool. Especially if you're less than like yeah. a few people. I don't know. Okay, Blue. Ready to install and test? See. Si. Okay, I pressed auto. Okay, pressing 10 to starboard. Yeah, it's working. It worked up here. Okay. Good job, senior. 
you can turn all that stuff back off. Hey, I said good job, senor. Oh, sorry, I can't hear you through there. Thanks. Ow. Oh, shit. Next up on Delos, we pick up our delivery crew. <laughs> so, how do we know you, Jade? Whew. Um, I do a lot of, you know, microelectronics work. Yeah, yeah. And soldering things that are like tiny, tiny. Point 0.1 millimeter. Yeah. If you don't have one of these, you're sunk. And prepare for our passage back across the Atlantic Ocean. Flavor. Wait, 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 you're drinking straight moonshine? Not with ice. Oh. <laughs> what are you swinging on, Blue? Our brand new five panel Delos hats. Which one do you like better, this one? Or this one? Uh, I like the blue better. The blue better? Yeah. That's just because you like blue. <laughs> <laughs> I see there's some gray hairs in here, Brady. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking stressful living with you. Eggshells. <laughs> Something's growing there. No, look at this. <laughs> this is the worst down here, watch. Ew! Ew. Oh nice, Alex! Alex is going blonde, dude. mostly there. Alex. Right? With a little bit of Kia and... Where is, where is mine? That's Sean. That is not yeah. That's yeah. Sean's <laughs> boobs. <laughs> I'm gonna put that back, Sean, and let you do what it... Ew! 